Hi everybody, welcome to Fire Pit Friday. I'm so glad you could join me. I would love to read to you a book. All right, let me get my adventure pack and look to see if I can find a book for us to read. This is not my book. This is a, a bag that I use for farmer's market to put my produce in or my fruit. Look at that. Hmm, what else do I have in here? Oh, this is my titanium spork. I always take it with me wherever I go, so that way I can eat anything that needs to be stabbed or scooped. Well, those are not the books I want to read. Let's look at my, I got some snacks here, that's for sure. Kumquats. Have you had kumquats? Kumquats are so good. They're like oranges, except you don't have to peel them. Look at that. A friend gave me these from her tree. And then I have, oh, what is this? Oh, the other day I made pumpkin banana chocolate chip bread. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Welcome. Maybe I can have this after I read the book. That's a great snack. Well, let's see what's in this part of my pack. Oh, for sure have my adventure hat. I always take this wherever I go because you never know how much you're gonna need to protect yourself from the sunshine. And the sun's been shining a lot more lately. Always have your adventure hat. Oh. And your binoculars. Always have those with you. Oh, let's see. I have a new bird book that I would love to show you. It's huge. I'm gonna tell you about this bird and see if you can get from the hint what bird this is. Now this is probably a bird that you often see in your yard. As my name says, I inhabit scrub and brush. I feed on frogs, bugs, and nuts. Protective and fierce, I even dive bomb and pounce the head of a cat as I call out with a raucous blat, blat, blat. What do you think? Here's the sound that it makes. You hear that blat, blat, blat? That bird, let's see if you've guessed it, is the Western Scrub Jay. Right there. The Western Scrub Jay. Aphalacoma californica. I say aphalacoma, you say aphalacoma. I say californica, you say Californica. Aphalacoma means simple hair, which means that its feathers don't have as many stripes on it as other jays have. Other jays look fancier with stripes and bands on their feathers. Now a lot of people, when they see scrub jays here in their yards, they'll say, see that um, blue jay. It's not a blue jay. It is blue and it is a jay, but it's a scrub jay. We don't have any blue jays in California. So now you know something that a lot of people in this area don't know. They call them blue jays a lot, but they're scrub jays. Western scrub jay, Aphalacoma californica. Be on the lookout. Let's see, what are some books? to choose from, from my adventure pack. Oh, How to Make an Apple Pie and See the World. That's a great book. The Day Jimmy's Boa Ate the Wash. Town Mouse, Country Mouse. I think I'll read to you, Hunting the White Cow by Trey Seymour in pictures by Wendy Anderson Halperin. 
Hunting the White Cow. This is the title page. Sometimes those are hints for what the book will be like. Somewhere north of Priceville, there's a white cow nobody can catch. She used to be ours, but she went wild. When she first got loose, Mr. Matthew, who helps Daddy run the farm, said, let's get a rope and go catch that buster. So he and Daddy put on their overalls and feed caps and pulled up their old brown crusty cow pie boots and got into the orange pickup truck to hunt the white cow. Can I come? I asked, but Daddy said, no, they'd be back in a few minutes. I woke up when they came stomping on the porch around midnight. Mr. Matthew had mud all up and down one side and Daddy had lost his feed cap. Mama plucked the leaves out of his hair. They didn't catch the white cow. I tell you what, said Mr. Matthew, that cow is one tough dude. I always said she was smart, said Daddy. Smartest cow in the county. That cow was so smart, she kept hid for weeks. The next we heard of her was when Ollie Jarbo, who owns the store, called on the phone and said, y'all's white cow is in Wilson's tobacco patch. This time, Daddy called up Uncle Bill and Uncle Bob to help hunt the white cow. They drove up with their overalls and feed caps and cow pie boots already on and ready to go. Can I come? I asked, but Uncle Bill said it would only take them a half an hour. I'll believe that when I see it, said Mama. They missed dinner. Daddy had so many stick tights stuck to him, he looked plum green. Uncle Bob groaned and rubbed his legs where he'd run through a patch of saw briars. All four smelled like they'd rolled in tobacco. I tell you what, said Mr. Matthew, that cow is one tough dude. And smart, said Daddy, smartest cow in the county. And fat, I reckon, said Uncle Bill. Lord, what a cow. She always did have a pretty calf, said Uncle Bob. You got a fine cow there. If you ever can catch her, said Mama. We never did see the white cow again for a month. But then Ollie Jarbo called and said, y'all's cows in Horton's cornfield eating like an old sow. Daddy took no chances. He called Papa to come help him and Mr. Matthew and Uncle Bill and Uncle Bob hunt the white cow. Papa wore the crustiest cow pie boots I ever saw. Can I come? I asked. But Papa said they'd only be gone an hour and a half. They had a secret weapon. Papa was the best cow caller in Southern Kentucky. He'd holler, Sook, 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 Sookie, Wee, -oo, Sook. And every cow for miles would moo and follow him like a dog. They'd get the white cow for sure. They didn't get the white cow. Mama had to help ring Daddy out from falling in the creek. Mr. Matthew shook the corn out of his boots. Uncle Bob picked the dirt out of his teeth with the toothpick. And Papa and Uncle Bill took turns rubbing each other's knees. I tell you what, said Mr. Matthew, that cow is one tough dude and smart, said Daddy. And fat, I reckon, said Uncle Bill. She always had a pretty calf, I recollect, said Uncle Bob. And the sweetest milk you ever tasted, said Papa. That cow's never been milked in her life, said Mama. Nobody paid her any mind. We never did see that cow again till I saw her for myself. 
I'd spent the day in the woods, and just about dusk, I spied her in the top pasture. I stalked up, quiet-like. I could hear her tearing up the grass and munching it into a cud and breathing heavy like cows do and switching her tail in the warm air. I could almost touch her when she looked right at me. But she didn't run. She let me lead her by the old rope around her neck till we got to the woods. Then she stopped. Cow, I said, I ain't letting go of this rope. She looked at me as if to say, I ain't going no further. Well, I wasn't about to let go of the famous white cow. You ain't so smart, I said. Daddy will come looking for me and see that I caught you and brag on me, something awful. I waited a while and it got dark. I waited a while more and I got sleepy. I leaned up against a stump with the rope tied around my wrist so that old cow couldn't go anywhere. Well, guess what? I didn't catch the white cow. Daddy found me asleep by the stump, but that old cow had just wrapped the rope around a tree and broken it off. When I got home, everybody had something to say. I tell you what, said Mr. Matthew, that cow is one tough dude. And smart, said Daddy. And fat, I reckon said Uncle Bill. She always had a pretty calf, said Uncle Bob. And the sweetest milk you ever tasted, said Papa. I didn't say anything, but I did keep the white cow's rope. And it's held up my pants ever since. Papa is gonna teach me cow calling. Watch out, white cow. Watch out. Thank you so much for joining me on Fire Pit Friday. I'll see you next Friday.